Hello, experimenters. I'm Seth Noir. Man behind the camera with the exceptional handwriting is a scene that loud. I uh, guess what I have. I have a present. I'm going to open it. Look at what I have here. This is a solenoid. Many, many, many turns of wire around a hollow core. And another one, too. Oh, more turns of wire. Uh, well, what to do with this? What do I know what we can do with this? Let's put them in a voltage divider, just like the last time. So, we have a source voltage. We can put a base resistor in series with our new toy. And then we could find the voltage going out of the solenoid with the equations just like before, leading to this. A ratio of the voltages. The ratio of the voltage of uh, the solenoid divided by the voltage of the source should equal the ratio of these resistances. The resistance of the solenoid divided by the series sum of the resistance of the base and the solenoid. Let's get started. All right. So, to find our resistances, we need our dear friend, the adjuvant 34405A. All right, so let's grab the resistance of our resistor here. Mm-hmm. Switch to Omega. And now, let's see. Oh, nearly a 10 kilo ohm resistor. All right. Let's find the resistance of our solenoid. Uh, let's change the scale to get the most data. All right. So, 75, 76 ohms now. Just ohms much less. Uh, while we're here, we won't need the inner one for a while. Let's grab this resistance too. And it tells us something. Ah, oh, yes. Less than an ohm. 0.258. Less than an ohm. And that makes sense to us. This one ought to have much less resistance than this one. Because this one has many more turns, so it has a longer wire. And you'll notice that the diameter of this wire is not as big as this wire. So, no, no. All right, so now that we have the resistances, we found one half of this already. All right, we can now find this ratio. Now let's find the voltage. But before I do that, I just want to see what the circuit looks like without this resistor here. Let's see if we could just find the voltage across just the solenoid. Right. Okay, so in my function generator, I'm putting the power directly into channel one. It is at 12 volts, 100 hertz. 12 volts, 100 hertz. All right. All right, so now, all right, let's see what happens. Take the solenoid. Now, let's see, channel one. This is hooked up to channel one, which is the current in, so now I'll put the current through the solenoid. Let's see what happens. Here we go, and... Oh, what happened there? Oh, my goodness. Well, we expect it to be slightly lower because of the internal impedance of the function generator, but not this lower. Look at that difference. That's crazy. Well, the truth of the matter is, is that because the resistance is so low, this poor function generator just can't produce enough current. That's why we need this second resistor here for a voltage. Okay, so 
now. All right, okay, so now, let's see. Positive end, put the resistor in first. We have a convenient connecting wire, so it goes out of the resistor, into the solenoid, and then out, back to ground. Great, great. And so now this is, and there was a slight voltage drop as we expected, but not nearly as much as before. So now right away, you can grab V source, V source, which will be on this channel one here. All right, now let's find the voltage across the solenoid with channel two. So high end, low end. I'll switch to channel two. That's both of them. Oh uh, yeah, look, that's just channel two. Whoa, that's a sad little voltage. So we have to change our scale. Ah, uh, okay. Okay, so on the 20 millivolt scale, same thing as before, find that voltage. That's now V source. All right, so now, now, that gives us this second part there.